Popular parenting methods are changing all of the time, but what types of parenting are really the most effective? I feel like we keep trying new things every couple of years. One year we've got somebody telling us to be our child's friend. Five years later, we have somebody saying, no, we need to be a tiger mama. Oh no, now we need to be a free range person. No, now we need to be more of a helicopter or maybe it's don't be a helicopter. There's so many different titles and descriptions of parenting. Really, what do we have to choose from? Well, in this video, we are going to be talking about what types of parenting there are and which ones are the most effective. Lucky for us, parenting can be broken into three different types of parenting or a combination of those types of parenting. In this video, we're going to talk about those three different types of parenting, which one is the most effective and how to properly use that style of parenting. Probably the most colorful parenting stories come from the type of parenting that we call belief fear-based, or you might call it authoritarian or authoritative or militant, or there's many different terms that a person could use for this type of parenting. But for this, we're going to call it bully fear-based parenting. I feel like that describes it the very best because parental authority is a must. Everyone needs to have and maintain their parental authority, but they need to do it through gentleness, through persuasion, not through aggression, fear tactics, domination. You can see how those words just saying them don't have the type of feeling of what you'd want for your home, right? Of course not. We want to have homes where people feel united and close, have open conversation, have goals and, and dreams that they share together. We want to live in an environment where people have purpose as a group not just to get through to the next stage. Sometimes that's what it feels like when you're with a bully fear-based parent. Like they don't even appreciate the fact that they are a parent. They don't like the opportunity to teach another person. It's somehow a burden to them. It gets in the way. The people don't seem to be doing what they wish that those people would do often enough that they have to control everybody else. So that requires nagging and it requires making threats to the people and upping consequences, more intense, more intense, more intense, taking things away. It really feels like a battle mentality. In fact, the bully fear-based parent sees themselves as the person who has to maintain the top of the hill as if they were fighting a battle. Parenting shouldn't feel that way. If it does, it's going to take years off of your life. Maybe people think that that's what parenting's supposed to do, but for me, it fuels me. Moments I spend with my children are the things that give me my power, that give me my peace, my happiness. And it's not just because I'm weird, which maybe I am, but it's because I've chosen to deliberately decide how I'm going to communicate with them and parent them instead of just go with whatever my emotions tell me to do, which is what bully fear-based parents do. The second type of parenting is modern progressive parenting. Now this could be called passive parenting. It could be called permissive parenting. It could be called be their friend parenting because that's the type of parenting it is. And there have been many movements over the years where people go from bully fear-based societies to permissive parenting societies. Well, everyone who takes the permissive parenting track thinks they're doing their child a favor because they're getting rid of all of the emotions that come with the bully fear base. They're not threatening. They think it feels friendly and kind. They dote on their children. They give their children lots of opportunities. They pay for their children to go to all kinds of classes and different things. So they do many nice things for their children, just like they would do for a good friend. The problem with this type of parenting is the leader gets lost. There isn't really one. When you're trying to achieve friendship, with your children, you lose 
any leadership. So you lose your parental authority. And this is why so many people have gone back in recent years to more authoritarian type parenting practices that involve spanking and yelling and threatening. And they feel validated in it because they see that the ones that are raised in these permissive families where the parents are trying to be the child's friend are doing a huge disservice to the child because the child is turning out to be selfish, lost, they're not taking responsibility for things in their life. They seem to be um, underdeveloped in a way because oftentimes they've been babied. And this is true. This happens most frequently in modern progressive parenting structures. Now that doesn't mean that a person couldn't be raised in that structure and still break out of it and be a person that doesn't fit the mold. That can always happen. We're just looking at the general outcomes that usually happen with these types of homes and families. The thing with the modern progressive or permissive and be their friend type parenting is that the child ends up feeling like nobody cares. Amazingly, the parents doting on them, giving them money and all kinds of things, but the child oftentimes feels like nobody's paying attention and nobody cares. See, the permissive parent is actually manipulating in their own way. They don't want to deal with whatever it is. They want the child to take care of it themselves. They're abdicating, <laughs> I got it out, their parental role. Anyway, I met a woman one time and she told me, she said, I was raised by that kind of parent. She had tears in her eyes streaming down her face when she told me in a whole room of people this, as I was speaking to a group in Las Vegas, she said, my mother would not tell me no for anything. She let me do whatever I wanted and told me it was always my choice. And so I chose everything that I could think of that would maybe shock her or get her to care. And she never did. She never said anything. She never stopped me. And I have ruined my life. And it has taken me years to even get to where I am now, she said. All because her mother wouldn't correct her. And that's what she wanted. That's what really hit me. I thought this woman was trying to get her mother to correct her, which is a basic parenting action. But lots of times, the modern progressive parents won't correct their child unless they think something is illegal. So they allow the society to be the authority on what's right and wrong, and they don't step in unless they will look bad to their friends. Otherwise, they let all kinds of misbehavior go. So that's modern progressive parenting. Traditional strict parenting is the third type of parenting. And this parenting is different than any of the other kinds. With bully fears-based parenting, the parent is manipulating to get the child to fear them. With modern progressive parenting, they're on the other end of the spectrum and they are trying to be as nice and as compliant, I guess, or, or basically uh, letting the child do whatever they want. You know, they're doing that, which is the opposite end of the spectrum of controlling everything and micromanaging everything. And by the way, husbands and wives, usually they'll be complimentary. Well, one's more one way and one's more another way. They think they need to go clear to this other end of the spectrum in order to help the child have a change of heart when in reality the child is lost anywhere in between these two different parenting styles and that's because anywhere on that spectrum is actually manipulation both of these parents on the spectrum are trying to get the child to just leave them alone, just take care of things themselves, just do whatever makes the parent happy. I know that's oversimplified. Obviously, these parents have hopes and dreams for their children, and they're not just slacking completely in their duties, but that's how it comes across oftentimes to the child, which then becomes a problem. And the thing is, most people who are bully fear based or modern progressive parents don't actually want to be either one of those. They think they are something else, which is that third type of parenting called traditional strict. Traditional strict parenting is not on the spectrum. It doesn't move back and forth and it's not in the middle of these two as many people think it is. It's on a completely different plane. 
Traditional strict parenting is so predictable that the child's heart is able to be touched and it's principle based. So every action that the parent takes, they are willing to take themselves as well. The parent is the ultimate example of the type of communication they're hoping that their child has. This is true leadership parenting, but it requires having a plan, being consistent and following through, seeing the value of all parties, not worrying about how you feel from one minute to the next, but instead staying focused on who you are as a family, where you're going, and the skills you need to get there. When a parent removes their emotional manipulation from the parenting, then they can touch the hearts of the people. Because what is the opposite of manipulation? Honesty. When a person has no manipulation in their parenting or in their relationships, then they can finally have true honesty. And when a person feels that honesty, then the hearts bond together. That's what self-government's all about, is learning how to honestly communicate with each other. So how do you become this traditional strict type of a parent? I didn't really know that I was a strict parent until I was asked to be on a BBC documentary called The World's Strictest Parents. And I know what you're thinking. That doesn't sound like a documentary. It sounds like a reality TV show. And that's what it was. And you can see it if you go and click the, the other little show there in the corner. When I was on that program, I wasn't sure I wanted to be called strict. Then I looked up the word strict and it meant a person who governs themselves by a set of principles, which means that if I have principles, I live according to my principles. My practice matches my principles. And I realized, oh, that is me. I've gone through a lot of thinking and planning to make sure that the words I say, the corrections I give, the teachings I give and conversations I have with my family members, especially my children, are principled. That's what a traditional strict parent does. They make a plan and they follow through with that plan. The majority of people want to be traditional strict. They make plans in their mind like, yes, I'm gonna be that type of a principled person. But the problem is they don't oftentimes have the skills that match their goal. So then they fall into being a bully fear-based parent or maybe being a modern progressive parent and they don't know how to get out of that trap. And when bully fear base doesn't work, they cross over the spectrum and try to go more toward being their friend. And then when they feel like that's not working or something really needs to be solved, they go back to bully fear base. They get stuck in this spectrum instead of being able to have their actions match the principles that they hold dear and being able to be the most effective with their children. Traditional strict parents have skills. There's a really great skill that everybody needs to know, and that's how to calm down when you're angry. The next video will teach you how to calm down when you're angry.